close to 12 o'clock now. Hi, I'm Laura Zervis, and I'm a registered dietitian and licensed nutritionist. I also have a culinary background, and I'm really happy to be here today um, on behalf of Lending Hearts to provide some nutritional content and um, talk about today, we're going to talk about the Mediterranean lifestyle eating plan. And I don't like to say um, Mediterranean diet because that people think of diet, it has that connotation that it's um, a restriction, so to speak, or that there's foods that are limited. And while there are some foods that are limited, I like to think about it as more of choices that we have and choices that we're equipped to make to make our lives healthier. And another thing that people like to talk about is currently the anti-inflammation diet. So if you have aches and pains, um, a lot of people will say, oh, I've tried an anti-inflammation diet, which the Mediterranean diet is the best anti-inflammation diet out there. And I'm going to show you, uh, we're gonna go over, make a few things that would be ideal um, coming from the Mediterranean lifestyle eating plans. We're gonna look at the Mediterranean lifestyle food guide pyramid. And, and you'll see really why we're calling it lifestyle because it's much more than food too. And we'll go over that a little bit later. And then we'll also talk about some ways that we could, you know, today start making changes so we could start eating this way and making these changes in our lifestyle. Um, so they're lasting change and it becomes more of our new eating pattern. And, um, you know, we change our life that way, really. So first of all, I'm going to make a lentil soup. And that is... Um, also on our plan and it's it's very, it starts with some green lentils, which I've already rinsed today, high in iron, high in the B vitamins, um, an excellent source of fiber. And what is in this soup is some lentils, some carrots, onions, celery, garlic, a bay leaf, and of course, olive oil. So uh, let's get started. I've already taken uh, the time to rinse the lentils. These are dried lentils. I didn't soak these overnight. Um, some recipes call for soaking overnight, but a lot of times now we find that if we bring them to a boil and then simmer them for an hour, they will cook sufficiently and be nice and tender for you. Um, so anyhow, I did rinse these and I'll show you what they look like in my bowl right here. And um, I'll set these aside. And the first thing that we're going to do is Excuse my back. We're going to saute um, our vegetables first. We're going to put our, our olive oil in first. And one half cup of olive oil. And all these recipes will be listed on my website at lauraservice.com. And there are some things today that I'm going to show you the finished product. And because of logistics, we can't do these things. I can't take you outside to my grill. Um, hopefully I can in the future, but right now um, I can't do that. So I've done some things ahead of time, but I do have all of those pictures posted so you could follow along. Sometimes having that picture and those photos gives you a better idea than when, I, when some of the words that I'm using. So let's get back to our soup. We start with some um, one half cup of olive oil, and then a small, um, a medium onion chopped up. Have that here. And two medium carrots chopped up, just a rough chop, um, a smaller dice, peeled and washed. And our celery, I've already chopped that fine. And that was two stalks. I'm gonna let that, um, while that is sauteing. Then I'm going to share my screen with you and talk a little bit more about the food guide pyramid for the Mediterranean diet. Before I do that, I wanna talk about the food guide pyramid that we have here, um, which if you recall at the very bottom is the grains and then it moves up and vegetables, and then you have the meat and dairy. At the very top, you have fats and oils. Mediterranean food guide pyramid, very different. So let's look at that right now. I'm gonna share my screen with you and we could take a look at it together. So you'll see that at the very 
bottom of the pyramid. And this is why I like to call it the Mediterranean diet lifestyle, <clears throat> excuse me, um, eating plan, because at the very bottom, it says be physically active, enjoy meals with others. And if you've ever been in the Mediterranean area, you'll see that eating is a very social activity. Uh, it's not done alone at our desk um, or at, you know, in, in short little intermittent times or in cars um, where we pick up some of those mindless eating habits or alone in front of a TV. Um, you know, those kind of things really aren't practiced. Um, it's usually a lot, it's usually eaten with others, with family, with friends. It's more of an occasion, an event. Um, and then the other part you saw was physically active. And we know that the current re recommendation for physical activity is anywhere from 150 to 300 minutes per week of, of moderate vigorous activity. So we want to make sure that also just going to give this a stir while we're talking. I'm also going to add my bay leaf and garlic. So it's moving along very nicely. And here I have chopped for you this morning. I minced uh, two to three garlic cloves. You, know, you can do more or less depending on your preference. But I like to add to the bay leaf. Um, and the bay leaf. And the bay leaf, um, pretty strong. You only need one. And we are going to remove this after the soup is done cooking. This isn't really something that any, we don't chop. You usually don't chop a bay leaf up. You usually leave it whole and remove it. Something that nobody wants to bite into. It is very, um, it is pungent. And um, well, it does give a lot of flavor. It's nothing that you would want to bite into. Okay, another minute or two while we're talking. Okay, so we were talking about how we want but the triangle, which means that it's so important because it's a large part of it. Um, and it's the base, right? It's the base of our pyramid. So it's very important to get those activities in, be physically active, enjoy meals with others. So you have that nice social component that we don't always think about. The second group, um, fruits, grains, vegetables, and it's saying mostly whole grains, olive oil, beans, nuts, legumes, seeds, herbs, and spices. Um, you know, you wanna have two to three servings of these a day of fruits and veg, two servings of fruits, two to three servings of vegetables, you know, whole grains, probably one at every meal, um, olive oil generously, which, okay, we we're talking about the other one where olive oil is at the top of our pyramid, um, is with grouped together with fats and oils. And you also see here seeds, herbs, and spices. So our lentils would definitely fall into that legume category. So you want to have things. my nice salad here made, a nice tossed salad. Um, I have around here, I have a little vegetable tray. We're going to make some other thing. Um, nuts, definitely. Uh, I've left them in there so I can take them out and show them to you later. And we could talk about the different kinds. Um, almonds, walnuts, cashews, pistachios, um, all of those are excellent choices. I would, if I were to rate them, I would start with olive oil, I mean, almonds, and then move down to pistachios, and then walnuts and cashews and pecans. All of them are good. Um, cashews seem to have, or almonds seem to have the most protein. And again, we're talking, even though you should incorporate them, probably one serving a day is sufficient. And that one ounce serving usually is about the amount that you could fit in your hand like that whenever you close your fingers over your over your palm. That's usually a one ounce serving. You could always throw some on a scale and see what one ounce looks like as for your reference so you have that another time. If you're putting them in a small sandwich plastic bag, usually takes about maybe three quarters of an inch at the bottom of the bag. So it's not a very big serving, but it's a very important serving and it's packed full of B vitamins and other sources of good fat, um, the omega-6 fat that we're, um, the American diet is always lacking. We seem to be higher in the omega-3s, um, which come from processed foods. So we're looking to increase those omega-6s and that's and they, they would be in this group right here along with our olive oil. Um, and then we see as we move up, hold on, let me add my lentils. I'm gonna add my lentils and um, the water to our soup so that I can finish cooking. I have six cups of, so I'm gonna add my lentils. And it's very important, I think I mentioned 
that I rent the lentils, um, you'll find sometimes uh, in, that they are, they could have small little stones or small little bugs in them. Uh, there's a lot of starch on them. You want to rinse them off, makes for a nicer product. You'll get less, what they call like a little bit of a scum on the top of the pot if you rinse them as well. Um, but again, mostly to keep out any foreign objects like stone or bugs. And I'm also going to add two cups of crushed tomatoes. I have that right here. I'm going to stir it together and then we're going to let that simmer. We're letting this simmer uncover um, so it reduces a little bit and gets some good flavor in there. Okay. Actually, I'm going to just kick that up a little bit till it boils um, and it'll reduce and then we'll just going to turn up the heat to bring it to a boil and then we'll simmer it <clears throat> so the beans cook very well. Um, so moving up the pyramid, we have fish and seafood. And ideally, if you have those around two to three times per week, even um, three to four times a week is fantastic. And we're talking about, um, you know, certainly whatever fish are in your region, um, there's always um, salmon available where I live, uh, fresh or frozen, cod, you could get shrimp, I've made a red snapper today that we're gonna make, um, see how we made today. Trout is a good one. Sardines, mackerel, the fattier fish are excellent sources as well. So any combination of seafood and fish, even, um, even the tuna that you get in a uh, package, that's fine. That does count as one serving of fish. However you could get that in there um, is great. So, you know, and when we're talking about a portion, we're talking about a probably a four ounce portion of fish and, uh, you know, full of omega sixes, so good for the cardiovascular system, so good for our brains. Um, very good in developmental uh, form fish does for us. So we can't emphasize that enough. And it says here, um, you know, it talks about the fish. And then the next section is poultry, eggs, cheese, and yogurt. So poultry is another good protein. It's an excellent protein that's widely available here. Um, and we're talking about the lighter cuts of meat versus the dark cuts. We're talking about preparing it um, simply grilled, broiled, you know, stir fried versus heavy sauces and the addition of, you know, uh, processed foods, um, you know, things that may like a uh, processed things that maybe that you just add a chicken to it. So we want to just simply prepare. And you will see that there is cheese, yogurt and dairy. It is eaten, it's eaten less frequently, and it's eaten in smaller portions. And the cheese and yogurt are probably eaten more often and bigger portions than just regular milk. And that's because they're fermented. So they do give us those benefits of, of being fermented. So those are also part of the, um, the, the diet there. So as we move up, um, let's see. It's telling us that the core foods that you'll shop for every day and enjoy are whole grains, fruits, vegetables, beans, herbs, spices, nuts, healthy fats, as olive oil, fish and seafood are typically eaten twice a week. I said as much as three and four times a week. If you were having the fish, chicken a little bit less than that, maybe a few vegetarian days in there, meat, red meat, very occasionally. Um, and then when, you, when you're thinking about the red meat, and thinking about having it in smaller portion, a good idea may be instead of having that, you know, 12 ounce prime rib, would to be have a smaller portion, um, you know, even a even a grass fed or a lean hamburger on a whole grain bun would be fine. But uh, what what the Mediterranean um, way might be to have that in a soup or a stew or um, you know in a probably not a stir fry, but something like that, where it's mixed up with other vegetables, where it's not necessarily the star of the show. It's kind of right in there with vegetables and it's more, it's even also considered a side dish at times. So less emphasis on red meat, definitely less in emphasis on, um, 
processed foods and less emphasis on sweets. Um, if sweets are consumed, it is a small portion. Um, so that's just something to keep in mind. Again, very different from the, the food pyramid that we see here. And uh, you'll see along the side, it says wine in moderation. We know there's the benefits to red wine. And the recommendation there is for women, no more than one glass a day. And for men, no more than two glasses a day. Um, and it should be eaten with meals. It should be consumed with dinner. Um, most of us don't have, uh, cannot eat it during lunch. We're probably working, um, but dinner is a great time to have that. It should definitely be with your foods um, and obviously lots and lots of water. And the recommendation, you know, some generally there is a, there's calculations that we could do that I could tell you the exact amount of water you should have. But in general, it's around anywhere from six to eight glasses, eight ounce glasses of water per day. So I, I love this food pyramid. I love that it, you know, that the emphasis is, uh, is down here. I love that we have, you know, that social time is encouraged. Um, you know, people often ask me the question, I always get asked the question, is it okay, you know, you know, if somebody's trying to manage their weight, they'll say, well, you know, I, I try not to eat past a certain time. Don't you think it's best for my weight if I don't eat past, you know, eight o'clock or seven o'clock? And my answer is, well, it's more about the total calories, right? And I know that in my family, we eat later. We eat probably seven o'clock at night, sometimes 7.30, but we eat together. So I would rather, I place more emphasis on that social aspect, finding out about each other's day. It's a great time to connect, um, talk about future plans. I mean, it's, it's a great place to unwind. It's a safe space. It's with our family um, where we get, we're free to discuss anything that we want. And, it, and it's a very peaceful and engaging time. And it's something that I actually look forward to every day is that, that time alone with my family over a good meal. So uh, I think that um, that's often underrated. And like I said, sometimes you know people eat alone or in their car, and that's where you get into that trap of mindless eating where those calories, you don't even realize that you may have eaten um, more calories than you wanted to. Let me just check on our soup, make sure that it's oil. Okay, we're gonna move on to our next item. So I'm going to, um, and I could put this up on my website as well. So you can um, take a look at that pyramid. You could always try doing an internet search on it as well, and you should be able to find it. There's different um, pictorials of it, but um, you should be able to find it. So the next thing we're going to make today is a hummus. Now let me just pull up my hummus recipe here. Um, this can be eaten alone. It could be eaten as a snack. It's a good complement to any um, any dish. You know, I like to eat it with vegetables, with carrots, with um, peppers, cauliflower. It's kind of my go-to when I get home from work and I'm when I'm hungry and I'm making dinner and I need something right away. It's usually hummus. And and vegetables because it's very filling. There's some protein, lots of fiber to keep me full. And it kind of curbs that um, appetite for later on too at dinner. A nice little snack like that of, of vegetables with some fibers is an excellent way to begin. So I'm gonna just get our food processor. My lid is down. Get down to the oil. Put that down. Let me get my I left my um, top in the other room. So what we're going to do is I'll tell you about the, the chickpeas. Um, people call them garbanzo beans, chichi beans, um, but they're an excellent source of fiber. High in B12 as well. And um, they taste great. You could have them on top of a salad. You could have them as a dish um, sauteed with some rice. Um, they make an excellent addition to many things. Even if you want to make yourself a vegetable burger, a lot of times you might find these type of beans in there, but today we're going to do some hummus. And you could start with a dry 
chichi bean or dry garbanzo bean and cook them. Um, you could also use canned. My recipe happened to call for three cups, which was approximately three cans. And uh, what I do first though, even though you may use canned, you want to cook them um, for about 20 minutes and just a low simmer. And that will make the, uh, for a creamier hummus. You won't get the um, chunks. And then the other thing that I do when, uh, and I don't know if I have any left here. Yes, I do. So I run them under some cold water and then you take off these little skins. You can see that right there. That also makes for a little bit more of a rustic hummus. So if you like a creamier hummus, um, I would peel off as many of those you can under some cool water after you get done um, simmering them for about 20 minutes. And you're gonna simmer them in the, in the liquid that the can, you know, that was in the can with the beans. And then you drain them and then you're gonna rinse them with cool water and that's when the skins come off. Um, so we're gonna go ahead and pulse these now in our food processor. Let me see if I can over here a little bit more for you. And this doesn't want to come over. So I'm just gonna adjust the screen here. And we're going to also add some tahini which is sesame seed paste. So let me. And this can be found in most grocery stores um, or if you go to a Mediterranean store, they definitely have it. And it's usually the same. I can't recommend one over any other. And we're just gonna give this a few pulses. <laughs> And once it's once it's completed, it's, um, stopping here, we could add a little bit of our juice. We have two ounces of lemon juice. So I'm going to pour that in there. That might help move things along here. Sometimes it gets stuck if it gets too dry. And this is just some fresh lemon juice that I squeezed this morning and I like to put it into a jar because I had several lemons and that just keeps it nice and fresh for me. And I'm just gonna add probably another ounce. And it's coming out very nice and creamy. and we'll check it, scrape off a little bit, see how that's coming. Oh yeah, this is beautiful. Okay, now you could stop here. You could add, um, it's a beautiful consistency. Like I said, it's nice and creamy since we got rid of the, let me just get some of that off there. It's nice and creamy since we took off the shells. Um, we could add salt and pepper to this or, or sometimes just a little bit of salt. And let me see if I can adjust this for you. Um, 
But what I would like to do is just show you two variations of what we could do. So I'm gonna reserve some of this. Let me get my little bowls over here. So let's take out some. And when I take, when I serve it, um, oh, it's beautiful. I usually drizzle a little olive oil on it, like so. And then I usually sprinkle some oregano or basil or crushed red pepper flakes, depending on what I'm having with it. If I'm having vegetables, I may just leave it like this. If I'm having some type of cracker or pita chip, then I might wanna do something else. But at this point, we could do something different. There's um, two choices that I have today. One is we could add our garlic to it. So we could either add roasted garlic like we did last um, on our last session together. We did the roast garlic in the oven. That would be the best. You could add raw garlic, which might make it a little bit um, spicy. And I also have some roasted red peppers. So first we're gonna take some out and reserve that. I'm gonna add my red pepper to this batch. And again, you could chop these up and stir this in here. Um, if you want it, if you want to see big chunks, if you don't care that our hummus probably is gonna get a little bit red, you could post the whole pepper in here. And that's what's happening, but it looks beautiful. And you can just even give it a few pulses here so you have a nice chunky red pepper hummus. And we could see it, it's really, I just did it a few turns. So we just see a couple flecks of red pepper and we'll take out our blade and we'll take out our other bowl right here. And that's beautiful. And I see I got a nice big chunk here. And I'm just going to take a few, um, while I was roasting the peppers, I just took a few um, diced red peppers and I'll just make them as my little garnish here. And also do a little bit of olive oil. So we have our red pepper hummus. And then now we're ready for our garlic. So I'll take out what I had reserved. Um, for the other, for the rest of that batch. Laid back in there. Okay, and then we'll add our garlic. Just a, uh, probably a clove, clove. And like I said, this is gonna be a little bit spicier than it would be if we roasted it, if when we roasted to get that nice sweet creamy flavor, which would be really nice as well. So you could do either way. So you would do, if you knew that um, from the beginning, you just wanted to make one type of hummus, um, I would recommend in step three there, when we put the chickpeas and the tahini there, you could add your roasted garlic or your red peppers. Or um, if you're doing like we did and you know you want to make a couple different kinds, maybe you want to make some with pine nuts or uh, uh, red pepper flakes or, or, or the spicy red pepper. Um, all of those could be done, you know, at the end as well. Plate here. Oh, it smells so good. And I'll do the same thing. Put it in the bowl. You know, this one you could garnish um, with some olive oil on top. And it's just nice to get that little bit of olive oil whenever you're dipping something in here. And what I've done is on the side, you know, just some, I think this goes great with it. The carrots, cauliflower, red peppers, green peppers, cucumbers go really well with this hummus. Um, and like I said, wheat crackers, pita crackers, tortilla chips, whole grain tortilla chips would be a nice option too. 
Um, but all of these are a fantastic snack, very healthy. We got a nice, you know, right off the bottom of that, um, the big, the big um, chunk of the food guide pyramid there, the Mediterranean food guide pyramid. So all of these are coming from that really large section. So this is a great way to incorporate that serving of legumes. And I would say about two tablespoons would be a serving of legumes. And if you had that a couple of times a week, you'd meet that requirement. Of course, there's other exciting ways to get it in too, but you know that you always have this. So, and of course, the serving of vegetables. Let me just set this aside and we'll start. Next item. And our next item is the one that I was telling you. Let me just clear some of our dishes away. Um, our next item that we're making, or that we have made, sorry about that. It was too difficult logistically wise to grill fish and um, back and forth. I already move around a lot, I know that. Um, so let me get the fish for you and tell you about how we made it. And again, okay. So here we have our red snapper, which I just took off the grill. And I'll tell you how I made it. Um, about the ingredients, I just covered with a little bit of plastic wrap to keep it nice. While we were talking, let me just get my fish towel here. Okay, we uh, were talking about making our red snapper. You would simply, um, when you go to the fishmonger, you would ask them to scale the fish and gut it and clean it for you. You would want to leave the head intact. If that offends you, you could always have it removed. Um, this could also be done with, um, with a, if you were to just purchase the red snapper fillets too, you would do the same thing. Um, you might want to, it would probably cook a lot in a, a lot less time. So anyhow, what we do is when you get bring it home, you're going to take the fish and you're going to rinse it off very well. Then you're gonna pat it with paper towels to get nice and dry. That is the key to cooking any fish. You always want to make sure that it's pat dry. That water is going to steam the fish and yield a mushy product. And you're not gonna get that nice crispy, this skin, this skin would never crisp up if there was water on it um, the way it has. And that, that's what really is the ticket to the fish. Um, but any fish that you're cooking, whether you're cooking cod, salmon, and you're sticking it in the oven or, or any, you know, any kind of preparation, broiling, baking, even frying, you'll notice too, if you're frying that if it's still wet, if you didn't get all that liquid out of it, all the water, it's gonna come out very mushy and really not that, um, not as appetizing, I don't think. So um, pat it down very well. That's that's key with paper towels. I'll never use a, um, a dish towel or anything like that because you're just introducing, you could possibly be introducing bacteria. You always wanna use a clean paper towel. Then my next step is to cover it, the whole fish inside and out with olive oil. And then using kosher salt, salt, you want to coat um, the fish really well. And you also want to take some cracked like pepper over it as well too. And you wanna make a nice crust. And I don't know if you could still see that here. I'll try to bend this down here. We've got a nice little crust on our fish and I could turn it over to the other side. Um, it's, it's just gorgeous. So anyhow, that is, um, we would put it into our, um, if you have a, you have a screen or some type of um, fish basket that you like to use, or sometimes people have them for vegetables um, that you could put on the grill to keep it intact because sometimes that sticks to the grill and it makes the skin come off and you'll, you'll lose a lot of your fish that way. But anyhow, you put it on there. This fish happens to be about a pound and a quarter, pound and a third. Uh, that typically takes around 22 minutes. Um, you could get snappers that are probably close to one and a half, two pounds. They're gonna be closer to 26 minutes. But usually um, uh, if I take a fish that's between one and a one half pound, it's around 22 minutes. I do 11 minutes on each side nice hot grill that's super important the grill has to be very hot and that's what gives us this nice crispy skin and let me show you what happens when we open it up let me get my and when it comes out what i do is i take an olive oil lemon mixture 
equal parts olive oil and fresh squeezed lemon. And I pour it over there to season it. And then I also reserve some of that to serve at the table. So like I said, it's already, we had our butcher uh, or the fishmonger, um, when he guts it, it, it opens this in half. So you're just going to stick, oh, and that's just beautiful. It just comes right off just like that. And you can see all that beautiful white meat. Um, sometimes you, I could just, you know, that lifts off right there. And then if you want, you could just take it right off the bone, just like that. And you have that beautiful meat. And then here is some, somebody may even want to um, have this piece because there is a lot of meat down here, but that just comes right off. And that's when you know that it's cooked very well. And then again, what I'm telling you is to um, really make this dish special. We do equal parts, olive oil and fresh lemon juice. And then we, let me get a fresh spoon. And just makes it so good. And you just put it drizzled right on. You could also add, um, you know, sprinkle a little fresh parsley on here, but this is just outstanding. It's uh, what I like about Red Snapper. It's such a good, um, not only is it good for you with oh, the omega, um, the omega fatty acids, but it also, um, it's very mild. It has a great taste. It really takes on the, the flavor of our, you know, the salt and pepper that we had on there. And it just, it just really brings out the natural flavor of the fish. Um, so it's a very nice one to have. And that's usually available year round. And you could get it most, you know, many grocery stores carry, grocery stores carry it now as well. And you'll see the whole fish there. And it's moderately priced. It's not too expensive. Um, so it could be a real nice addition to your diet. So the other thing that we have today, um, since we were talking about that middle section was our nice salad here. And you could see that I have um, a lot of nice fresh greens here. I like to make a variety of greens, not just leaf lettuce. I like to include romaine. Uh, very rarely do we use iceberg, but you know, maybe red and leaf green lettuce, the spring mixes, spinach, kale, escarole, mustard greens, arugula, those all just make for a really interesting salad. So we have everything in here and it comes to the dressing. So remember at the food guide pyramid, it said very little processed foods. So we don't wanna to go to all this time to have all these wonderful fresh vegetables. Um, we have, you know, we went to all the trouble to make our own homemade hummus. And yes, you could get it commercially and there's a lot of good commercial brands out there but there's nothing like making it at home and adding your own roasted red peppers to it or your own roasted garlic or your own, um, you know, just a drizzle of fresh olive oil. Um, Store-bought is fine, commercial brands are fine, but sometimes it's nice to be able to, you know, if you're, if you're entertaining or you want just, you know, you want it for the week, you know, it's so economical to do it that way too, because beans, uh, like the lentils that we use today, very economical, goes a long way. That'll be a whole meal, you know, for probably less than $2. Um, and then the other the canned um, garbanzo beans that we used in our chickpeas, very cost-effective, um, much cheaper than buying the commercial hummuses, which could be, I've seen them, you know, as much as $5 for a small container. So it is good sometimes to be able to do it on your own. So getting back to that is talking about processed foods. So I don't want to go to all this trouble to have all these nice, beautiful greens and fresh vegetables and use a bottled salad dressing on them um, because basically they are processed. And if you've ever checked the labels of some of those, many contain sugar and hydrogenated fats. Um, which are not healthy for us and can cause inflammation. So remember the Mediterranean eating plan is, not, is you know, of course it wasn't, um, it just happens to be anti-inflammatory. It's not that that was the way it was designed. The people ate that way, right? And then we saw less incidence of cardiovascular disease there. And we started looking at that diet more closely. And yes, it is anti-inflammatory. So we're going to make some salad dressings today. And I encourage you, um, if you ever have spare time, to really play around with some different flavors. Um, it's so easy to do. And we're gonna do one today and it's one of my favorites and it's a balsamic vinaigrette. Let me get my, I use my little cup here and I have my olive oil and I have salt and pepper. Let me just grab my plate. Um, 
um, garden, which has been dried. I love, I prefer to use fresh basil, um, but anyhow, this will do the trick. So there's, you know, so many different options for salad dressings and you always want to start the basis is um, you always want to start with a good quality olive oil because you'll be tasting it. It's not going to get, it's not like you're cooking with it and you'll taste the rest of the, the vegetables and the seasoning. This is gonna be, it's the basis for the salad dressing. So it's gonna, it plays a huge role. So you should invest in a good tasting, extra virgin olive oil that, um, that you're gonna like. So anyhow, when we, there's different um, ratios. I'm gonna put these on my website as well. We could make a salad dressing with olive oil and balsamic vinegar. Balsamic vinegar. We could use apple cider vinegar. We could use raspberry vinegar, um, walnut vinegar. Um, just thinking of one, raspberry, balsamic, apple cider, even white vinegar, rice vinegar. Um, all of those will do. And one of my favorites, when we are having a grilled fish like tuna, and sometimes even the red snapper, a lemon uh, vinaigrette dressing. And that is just so good. And I'm gonna put those recipes up. But anyhow, they all have, what's different about all of the different vinegars is they have a different ratio of olive oil to vinegar. Um, the balsamic vinaigrette that I'm gonna make is a ratio of three parts of olive oil, one part of balsamic vinegar, and then various herbs. Uh, it's gonna vary slightly when we use the apple cider vinegar. It's going to be three parts olive oil, two parts vinegar and whatever herbs. And when we're making lemon, uh, lemon vinaigrette, it's equal parts olive oil and lemon juice. So it's all good. It's just going to vary on the different types. And the reason for that is these all vinegars and the lemon juice, they all vary in acidity and flavor and depth of, of you know, of the actual vinegar itself. So those are going to yield different flavors and that's why there's different ratios. So when I say that this one is three to one, we could use three tablespoons, we could use three equal size containers of anything. Um, so, but I'm gonna choose to use this quarter cup measure and do it like this. And I'll do three, one. Two, and let me just adjust this so you could see what I'm doing. Three, and we said one part of balsamic. Okay. Now, salt, and I just add probably about a half teaspoon. Cracked pepper, it turns. That really, and then we do our basil, and we're probably going to do about oh, about a good teaspoon in there. And like I said, if I had fresh basil, um, I would probably use you know three to four leaves. Chop it up. Um, what we do is you chop it up, and you would fold it to, after you wash it and pat it dry, you fold it up like a little cigar, and then you just chop it into a chiffonade, and then we could add that right to here. Close our jars. And I like to save on, if you noticed, I like to save some of my glass jars and um, just give it a good shake. And this'll, you know, this is wonderful to use now. Um, it'll last up to seven days in your refrigerator. Mm, smells delicious. And you could also add some garlic to this as well. Just depends on what you like. I find that um, when I make a salad that has um, maybe some berries in the wintertime, we like to do a berry family at our home where it'll be raspberries, blackberries, maybe even some mandarin oranges in a spring mix or spinach. We will always do the balsamic with that one. Um, like I said, the lemon and vinaigrette we like to do when we have fish dishes and or um, we always sometimes we'll pour that one over broccoli too, uh, cooked broccoli that tastes very good. And then the other thing, um, the apple cider vinegar is a good everyday dressing too. So get play around with some and see what you like and you know make 
some notes and remember what you did. You know, you could certainly play around with the, the garlic and the various herbs and um, to see what gives you, you know, what flavor you like the best. So I'm just gonna give our soup a stir here. And see how that's going. Then we'll rice. I'll show you the pot. And this typically takes an hour. Goes before program is over. All right, so let me just, we talked about, um, we talked about our fish, and we talked about the um, pyramid. And lastly, I would just like to talk to you before I, before we show all the foods is, uh, excuse me, is about, you know, how to incorporate the Mediterranean diet into your plan already. What can you do today to start, um, to start eating this way? Uh, you probably noticed, olive oil. Any fat that you have in your home right now, if you switch to olive oil, that would be a great change. Say today you're having um, garlic toast at dinner. Instead of using butter on your bread, try some olive oil. Um, you know, try olive oil in place of other places that use butter too, even sauteing vegetables. Um, sometimes people use butter for that or um, to, to uh, scramble an egg. Try use, replacing olive oil those places. Um, you'll find it adds a lot of flavor um, and it goes a long way to keeping your heart healthy in the anti-inflammatory process. So olive oil as often as you can. And you could see today, we used olive oil in our hummus. We used olive oil in the lentil soup. There's olive oil on our fish and there's olive oil in our salad dressing. So not hard to meet the requirement for, for getting those um, healthy fats in for the day. All right, the next thing is eating nuts and olives. And I left this field until we were ready to talk about it because I didn't want them going all over the place. So these are our mixed nuts that we discussed earlier. And I will put them in the can here so we can see them. And the other thing that I want to emphasize, I was talking about, you know, the different nuts and how they're the benefits of them. And I, I still say that, you know, the almonds are probably one of the better ones, followed by pistachios, cashews, walnuts, and pecans. And the best nuts are obviously, um, you know, it's nice when you get them, you'll see them around this time of year or December, you'll see that they have them in the grocery store and you could actually crack them yourself. So those are, that's very good because there's nothing on those. There's no seasonings or spices. Um, I recommend, you know, just either plain dry roasted or lightly salted, um, you know, with some sea salt. I, I think that's better. I don't think it's, uh, I think it's counterproductive to get, um, you know, honey roasted or sugar crusted walnuts or things like that. Um, that's just adding extra sugar and calories to a, a really healthy food. So again, we talked about the serving size for these approximately uh, a fistful. So not that much, not that much. Um, and you'll see that if I put this on the scale, it's probably very close to uh, an ounce. It ends up being maybe you know, 12 to 15 almonds, um, but obviously a great choice, makes a fantastic snack. Uh, definitely use them in place of chips um, pretzels or refined, you know, white flour kind of snacks. That's a, a really good choice. And they're very filling as well. Um, you want to try whole grain bread. You know, uh, you always want to check the package. Um, and mine here has no added sugar and I'll get it out of the cellophane so you could see it. It's a multi-grain bread. And you want to always read the label to make sure, you know, it may look dark, but you want to make sure that it's actually made, you know, that it has a whole grain flour, that there's no added sugars, um, that it's, you know, more rustic than refined. And those can be found in most grocery stores or some bakeries and specialty shops. Um, you want to try some different grains like bulgur or kusku or farro. Um, all of those are great to experiment with, you know, versus, um, versus having, you know, always white pasta or always white rice. Uh, the next thing that you want to do is maybe have a salad before every meal or after every meal, like a, a 
you know, a tossed salad like we have here before your meal and maybe a, a small fruit salad after a meal um, to get the vegetables. And like I said, to give you a little bit of fiber and fullness. The great thing um, when you think about the Mediterranean food guide pyramid is it's built in to give you a nice ratio of fats, carbohydrate, and protein. What's also built into this too is it should also get you your recommended daily um, amount of fiber. And that amount, it's very hard to get. Um, if you're not paying attention to it, it's a lot easier if you're eating the Mediterranean way because the good sources are the legumes, fruits, and vegetables. Um, the recommended intake is anywhere from 25 to 35 grams per day. Um, usually 25 uh, is the side for women, the higher end of the scale is for men. And you'll see, I have, uh, you know, people will try to increase their fiber. They'll say, there's not that much fiber in my bread. There's not much in my cereal. You really, really have to work at getting that fiber in every day. Um, it just doesn't happen. And it doesn't happen if you're eating um, white flour products and refined white flour products or white bread. Um, and no vegetables. So the best things, like I said, are the legume family, the nut family, the vegetable family, everything that we have here today, our salad. The lentil soup is an excellent source of fiber. All of the legume, all of the soups that are made from legumes, split pea, um, lentils, the navy beans, the kidney beans, the white beans, all of those are an outstanding source of fiber and really good to incorporate into your diet. So good for your, not only cardiovascular system, but also our GI system, you know, as far as moving through the gut faster, exercising our gut a little bit, binding cholesterol and removing it from the body. So many rules of fiber and it also makes us feel full. So um, that's a, an added benefit as well. You wanna try adding different vegetables to your day. So I know I have the good old staples here, of cauliflower and peppers, you know, mix it up, try zucchini, try, um, you know, different exotic flake, um, colored peppers. You have the mini peppers that we see now. Um, you know, certainly these ones are very cost effective though. You know, carrots are always at a great cost um, and a great addition to your diet bright orange, they're fantastic. Try to eat the rainbow, you know, incorporate the eggplant, make some stews. Um, that's a great, that's another thing when we're talking about the stews in the Mediterranean diet, you're going to find a lot of vegetable stews that are main dishes that may have a, be a base for eggplant, um, zucchini, onions, tomatoes. Um, very popular to have a lot of those things. You know, you see the ratatouille, um, that's also very high. You see some other things that are, are made with that as well. A lot of vegetable stews. Um, we're talking about eating the three servings of legumes per week. You could get that easily. One bowl of soup, you know, hummus a couple of times. You know, it's very easy to get that in. So I encourage you to try to do that. And we also want to talk about eating less red meat every day, every week, I should say, you know, make it uh, more of that rare occasion when you indulge in some red meat. If you are going to eat it more frequently, um, if that's what is in your, you know, if you find that that's more cost effective for you to have some uh, cuts of red meat, make sure it's small, serve it with a lot of vegetables, um, serve it in sauces, stews and soups. And that way the, the vegetables will be the star and the meat's just kind of an added protein in there. Um, let's see. And, you know, you want to, instead of the hard alcohol, you want to substitute, you know, like the um, vodka, gins, whiskey, those kind of things, you would want to substitute wine and wine would be your alcoholic beverage of choice. Um, it has a lot of benefits for the heart. We know that with red wine. And we also know that, you know, enjoying our foods with friends and family is a big part of the diet as well. So you want to make it social, you don't want to eat in isolation, and you want to make it memorable where you have a, a place to talk with um, friends and family over a meal. So let's just look at some of the things we had today. We have different kinds of hummus. We have, and we're going to pair that up with our uh, fruits and vegetables. And you could also pair this up with some whole grain crackers too. There's, uh, that's okay. But certainly if you're looking at weight management, you would definitely want to make um, the vegetables the big part of that. We have our red pepper. And again, um, you could see how that's prepared and how I pat it dry and how I seasoned it. And I didn't mention how, um, 
how it also needs to be scored. So you'll find that extra step on the on my website as well. If I got the this product, want to start every day with a salad before your dinner um, to get increased vegetables and fiber. And let me go get us that serving of soup. So we can see how that turned out. Uh, it's so delicious. And this is a great, um, oh, looks so good. And it's going to be a little bit thick for you because of the starch, you can always add more water. Um, here's our soup. Let me show you right there. Nice piece of whole grain crusty bread and, and you have yourself a little meal there. So thank you so much for joining me today. If you have any questions, please reach out to me. Again, all of my recipes um, are on the website and techniques too. Um, I will also put a couple of the other salad dressings out there for you if you're looking for something and I encourage you to try them. It's such an easy thing to do and your family will love it. Um, and the other thing, yeah, the, the how to cook the fish as well. I have some more steps on there listed so you don't miss out on anything. And if you have any questions, please, I'm always here. So great to see you today. Have a wonderful day and I'll see you next time.